Hi, my name is Everett. Today I'm reading number six, Afternoon on the Amazon by Mary Pope Osborne, Magic Treehouse series. Number one, New York Times bestselling series. Duck and Annie are on the run. When the Magic Treehouse whisks them to the Amazon River, they dodge killer ants and vampire bats. It's not long before they get hopelessly lost. Will they be able to find their way back to the treehouse or are Jack and Annie stuck in the rainforest forever? We will find out in this book. So, if you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. Prologue. Once upon a day in Front Peak, Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. Eight-year-old Jack and his seven-year-old sister Annie climbed into the treehouse. They found it was filled with books. Jack and Annie soon discovered that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to the places in the books. All they had to do was point to a picture in which to go there. Jack and Annie visited the times of dinosaurs, knights, pyramids, pirates, and ninjas. Along the way, they discovered that the treehouse belonged to Morgan Le Fay. Morgan is a magical librarian from the legendary realm of King Arthur. She travels through time and space and gathering books. In their last adventure, Night of the Ninjas, Jack and Annie learned that Morgan was under a spell. To free her, Jack and Annie have to find four special things in old Japan. They found the first thing, a moonstone. Now Jack and Annie are about to set off in search of the second thing. In Afternoon on the Amazon, Chapter 1, Where's Peanut? Hurry, Jack, shouted Annie. Annie ran into the Frog Creek woods. Jack followed her. It's still here, Annie called. Jack got up with Annie. She stood beside a tall oak tree. Jack looked up. The magic treehouse was shining in the afternoon sunlight. We're coming, Pina, Annie called. She grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Jack followed. They climbed and climbed. Finally, they climbed into the treehouse. Pina said Annie. Jack took off his backpack. He looked around. Sunlight slanted across the stacks of books. A Books about ninjas, pirates, mummies, knights, and dinosaurs. The leather M shimmered on the wooden floor. M for Morgan Le Fay. I don't think Peanut's here, said Jack. I wonder where she is, said Annie. How do you know she's a she? Asked Jack. I just know, said Annie. Oh, brother, said Jack. Squeak, Annie laughed. Jack looked. Jack, look. A small pink sock was moving across the floor. Yesterday, Annie had turned her sock into a bed for Peanut. Annie picked up the tiny lump. Squeak! A brown and white mouse peeked out of the sock. She looked from Jack, Annie to Jack with her big eyes. Jack laughed. Hi, Peanut, he said. Will you help us again? asked Annie. In old Japan, Peanut had helped them when they'd gotten lost. We have to find three more things for Morgan, said Annie. Jack puts his glasses in place. First, we have to find a clue that tells us where to go, he said. Guess what, said Annie. What, said Jack. We don't have to look very far, she said. She pointed to the corner of the treehouse. In the shadows was an open book. Chapter 2. Big Bugs. Wow, said Jack, picking up the book. The ninja book was open yesterday. Now this one. Who opened this? Jack closed the book and looked at the cover. It showed a picture of a green forest. The trees were very tall and close together. On the cover were the words, the rainforest. Oh, wow, said Jack. Oh, no, said Annie. What's wrong, said Jack. I learned about the rainforest in school, said Annie. It's filled with big bugs and spiders. I know, said Jack. Half of them have even been named. It's creepy, said Annie. It's neat, said Jack. He wanted to take lots of notes on the rainforest. Maybe he could even name some unknown bugs. Neat, yuck, said Annie. She shivered. I don't get it, said Jack. You weren't afraid of dinosaurs, so you weren't afraid of the castle guards or the mummy's ghosts, so you weren't afraid of pirates or ninjas, so you're not afraid of really scary things, but you're afraid of little bugs and spiders? That doesn't make sense. So, Jack sighed. Listen, he said, we have to go there to help Morgan. That's why the book was left open. I know, said Annie frowning. Plus, the rainforests are being cut down. This said Jack. Don't you want to see one before it's too late? And he took a deep breath and slowly nodded. Okay, then let's go, said Jack. He opened the book again. He pointed to the picture that showed blue sky, green leaves, and bright flowers. I wish we could go there, he, he said. The wind began to blow. Squeak! Stay there, penis! said Annie as she put the mouse in her pocket. The wind picked up. The trail started to spin. Jack squeezes her shut. The wind whistled. Now... The treehouse was spinning faster and faster, then everything was still, absolutely still. Loud sounds broke the silence. Screech, buzz, chirp, chirp! Chapter 3. Yikes! Jack opened his eyes. The air was hot and steamy. It looked 
looks like we landed in some bushes, said Annie. She peeked out of the treehouse window. Peanut was peeking out of Annie's pocket. Jack peeked out of the treehouse, too. They had landed in a sea of shiny green leaves. Outside, there were flowers, bright butterflies, and birds, just as in the book. That's strange, said Jack. I wonder why we didn't land in a tree the way we always do. I don't know, said Annie. But let's hurry and find the thing for Morgan so we can get back home before we meet any big bugs. Wait, this seems weird, said Jack. I don't understand. Why didn't we land in bushes? I'd better check about this. Oh, come on, said Annie. We don't even need the ladder. We can just climb out of the window. She put Peanut in her pocket. She stuck out one leg out of the window. Wait, said Jack, grabbing Annie's other leg. He read, the rainforest is made of three canopies. The thick treetops over 150 feet in the air make up the top layer. This is called the forest canopy. Below the canopy is the understory, then the forest floor. Get back he- in here, cried Jack. We're probably more than 150 feet above the ground. It's the forest canopy. Yikes, Lenny, she slipped back into the treehouse. We have to use the ladder, said Jack. He got on his hands and knees. He moved leaves away from the hole in the floor. He looked down. The ladder seemed to fall between the branches of the giant trees, but Jack couldn't see beyond that. I can't tell it's down here, he said. Be careful. Jack put the rainforest book into his backpack. Then he stepped onto the rope ladder. He stared down, and he followed with peanut in her pocket. Jack pushed through the leaves. He came to the understory below the canopy. He looked down at the forest floor. It was very far away. Oh man, whispered Jack. This world was completely different from the world above the treetops. Now that they were out of the sun, it was cooler. It was cooler. It was also damp and very quiet. Jack shivered. It was the spookiest place he had ever seen. Chapter 4. Millions of them. Jack didn't move. He kept staring down at the forest floor. What's wrong? Annie called from above. Jack didn't answer. You don't see any giant spiders, do you? Said Annie. Well, no. Jack took a deep breath. We have to keep going, he thought. We have to find the special writing for Morgan. No spiders. Nothing scary, Jack called. And he started down to the ladder again. Jack and Annie climbed down through the understory. Finally, they slipped down to the forest floor. Only a few rays of sunlight slanted through the gloom. The trees were very, very tall and very wide. Vines and moss were hanging from everywhere. The ground was covered with dead leaves. Before we do anything, I'd better check the book, said Jack. He pulled out the rainforest book. He found the picture of the dark world under the treetops. He read... In the rainforest, many living creatures blend in with their surroundings. This is called camouflage. Oh, man, said Jack. He closed the book and looked around. There are tons of creatures down here. We just can't see them. Really, whispered Annie. Jack and Annie peered around at the quiet forest. Jack felt unseen eyes watching them. Let's hurry and find the special thing, whispered Annie. How will we know when we find it, said Jack. I think we'll just know, said Annie. She headed off through the gloom. Jack followed. They crept between the huge trees and past hanging vines. Annie stopped. Wait, what's that? What's what? Listen, that weird sound. Jack listened. He heard a crackling sound. It sounded like a person walking over leaves. Jack looked around. He didn't see anyone, but the sound got louder. Was it an animal? A giant bug? One that had never been named? Just then the silent forest came alive. Birds took off into the air. Frogs hopped over the leaves. Lizards ran up the tree's trunks. The weird noise grew louder and louder. Maybe the book can explain, said Jack. He opened the book and found the picture of different animals running together. He read, when they animals hear crackling sound, they flee in panic. The sound means that 30 million flesh-eating army ants are marching through the dead leaves. Army ants, cried Jack. Millions of them. It's army ants. Where, cried Annie. Jack and Annie looked around wildly. There, Annie pointed. Army ants, millions and millions of them were marching over the leaves. Run to the treehouse, cried Annie. Where is it, said Jack, whirling around. All the trees looked the same. They. Where was the rope ladder? Just run, cried Annie. Jack and Annie took off. They ran over the dead leaves. They ran between the tree trunks. They ran past the hanging vines and mosses. They climbed over thick roots. Jack saw a clearing ahead. It was filled with sunlight. That way, he cried. Jack and Annie hurried toward the light. They pushed their way through the bushes. They burst onto the riverbank. 
They stared down at the slow-moving brown water. Do you think the ants will come into this this way? And he said, panting, I don't know, said Jack, but if we made a few feet into the river, we're safe. The ants won't go into the water. Come on. Look, said Annie. She pointed to a big log rocking on the edge of the river. The inside of the log was dug out. It looks like a canoe, said Jack. He listened to the crackling sound of the distance. Let's get in it. Quick. Jack shoved the book into his backpack. Then he and Annie carefully climbed into the dugout log. Annie leaned out of it. She pushed away from the bank with her hands. Wait, said Jack, we don't have a paddle. Oops, said Annie. The canoe started moving slowly down the muddy river. Chapter five, pretty fish. Squeak, Annie patted the little mouse in her pocket. It's okay, Peanut, the ants can't get us in the river. We're safe, she said. Maybe safe from the ants, said Jack, but where's this canoe going? Jack and Annie stared at the river. Branches spread over the water vines and mosses hung down from the, them we better look this up said jack he pulled the rainforest book out of his backpack and flipped through it soon he found a picture of the river he read the amazon river stretches over four thousand miles from the mountains of peru across brazil to the atlantic ocean the river basin contains over half of the rainforests in the world jack looked at annie we're on the amazon river he said it's more than four thousand miles long wow annie whispered she looked at the river. She trailed her in through the water. I have to take notes, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook out of his backpack. He wrote, the Amazon rainforest is... Jack, look, oh, those pretty fish with the big teeth, said Annie. Jack glanced up from his writing. Annie was pointed to some blue fish swimming near the boat. The fish had red bellies and razor-sharp teeth. Watch it, cried Jack. Those aren't pretty fish. They're piranhas. They'll eat anything, even people. Yikes, whispered Danny. We better get back to shore, said Jack, putting the book into his backpack. How, said Danny. We can't go in the water now, and we don't have any paddles. Jack tried to stay calm. We need a plan, he said. Jack stared at the river. The canoe would soon float under some vines. I'll grab a vine, he said, and pull us to shore. Good idea, said Annie. As they glided under the branches, Jack stood up. The canoe rocked. He nearly fell out. Balance the canoe, said Jack. Annie leaned to one side. Jack reached. He missed. The canoe floated under more vines. Jack reached for another thick vine. He grabbed it. It was cold and scaly. It wiggled and jerked. Ah! screamed Jack and fell back into the canoe. The vine was alive. It was a long crock green snake. The snake fell into the from the tree. It splashed into the water and swam away. Oh man, said Jack. He and Annie stared in horror at each other. What now, said Annie, making a face. Well, Jack looked at the river. There were no vines ahead, but there was a big log floating on the water. You grab that big branch near you. Maybe you can use it as a paddle. The canoe floated close to the branch. Suddenly, and he reached for it. Suddenly, the branch rose into the air. It was a crocodile. Help! screamed Annie, and she fell back into the canoe. The crocodile opened and closed its huge long jaws. Then it moved past them, and the canoe swam up the river. Oh, man, whispered Jack. The, a screeching sound split the air. Jack and Annie jumped. Help! said Jack. He expected to see another terrible creature, but all he saw was a small brown monkey hanging by its tail from a tree. Chapter 6 Monkey Trial Squeak, squeak! And he poked her, Peanut poked her head out from Annie's pocket. She seemed to be yelling at the monkey. Don't worry, Peanut, said Annie. He's just a little monkey. He won't hurt us. But suddenly, the monkey grabbed a big red fruit and hanging from a tree and hurled it at the canoe. Watch it, cried Jack. The fruit fell into the water with a splash. The monkey screeched even louder. He grabbed another fruit. Don't throw things at us, shouted Annie. But the monkey hurled the red fruit at them. Jack and Annie ducked again and they... Fruit splashed into the water. Stop that, shouted Annie. But the monkey only waved his arms and screeched again. Oh, brother, said Jack. I don't believe this. The monkey grabbed the third fruit and hurled it at Jack and Annie. It landed inside the canoe with a thump. Annie grabbed the fruit. She stood up and threw it back at the monkey. She missed. The canoe rocked and Annie almost fell out. 
The monkey screeched even louder. Go away, Annie shouted. You're the meanest thing in the world. The monkey stopped screeching. He looked at Annie. Then he swung away into the forest. I think I heard his feelings, said Annie. Who cares, said Jack. He said it throw things. Uh-oh, said Annie. It's raining now. What? Jack looked up. A raindrop hit him in the eye. Oh, no, I don't believe this, said Jack. What do you expect, said Annie? It's a rainforest. A gust of wind blew the canoe. Thunder rolled in the sky. The river's a bad place to be in a storm, said Jack. We have to get back to shore right now. But how, said Annie? We can't wade or swim. The piranhas and the snakes and the crocodiles will get us. Squeak, she split the air again. Oh no, said Jack, the bratty monkey was back. This time he was pointing a long stick at the canoe. Jack crouched down. Was the monkey going to hurl the stick at them like a spear? And jumped up to face the monkey. Watch it, he's nuts, said Jack. But the monkey just stared at Annie and Annie just stared back at him. After a long moment, the monkey seemed to smile. Annie smiled back. What's going on, said Jack? He wants to help us, said Annie. Help us how, said Jack. The monkey held out the long stick. Annie grabbed the other end. The monkey pulled the other end. The monkey pulled on the stick. The canoe started floating toward him. The monkey pulled the canoe all the way to the bank of the river. Chapter 7. Freeze! Jack and Annie jumped out of the canoe. The rain w was starting to fall harder. The monkey took off. He swung from tree to tree, heading up the river bank. He screeched and beckoned to Jack and Annie. He wants us to follow him, Stan. No, we have to find the special thing. Then go home, said Jack. He wa wants to help us, said Annie. She took off after the monkey. The two of them vanished into the rainforest. Annie, Annie, thunder shook the sky. Oh, brother, said Jack. He dashed after Annie and the monkey into the dark forest. The forest seemed surprisingly dry. Jack looked up. It was still raining, but the treetops acted like a huge umbrella. Annie called Jack. Jack, Jack, cried Annie. Where are you? Here. Jack hurried in the direction of Annie's voice. Soon he found her and the monkey. He was scree He was screeching and swinging from tree to tree. Annie was kneeling in the floor's floor. She was playing with an animal that looked like a giant kitten. What's that, said Jack. I don't know, but I love it, said Annie. She bagged the animal's paw. It had golden fur and black spots. I'd better find this out, said Jack. He pulled out the rainforest book and flipped through it. It's so cute, said Annie. Jack found a picture of the animal with gold fur and black spots. He read, the jaguar is the biggest predator in the western hemisphere. Forget cute, said Jack. That must be a baby jaguar. It's going to grow up to be the biggest predator in... What's a predator? asked Annie. Grrrr. There was a terrible growl. Jack whirled around. The mother jaguar was coming out from behind the tree. She was creeping over the dead leaves right toward Annie. Freeze, whispered Jack. Annie froze, but the jaguar kept moving slowly toward her. Help, Jack said weakly. Suddenly, the monkey swooped down from the tree. He grabbed the jaguar's tail. The cat roared and spun around. Annie jumped up. The monkey pulled the jaguar's tail again. Then he let go and took off. The jaguar sprang after him. Run, Annie, cried Jack. Jack and Annie took off through the rainforest. They ran for their lives. Chapter 8, Vampire Bat. Wait, said Jack, panting. I think we got away. Jack and Annie stopped running and caught their breath. Where are we, said Jack. Where's the monkey, said Annie, looking back at the forest. Do you think the jaguar caught him? No, monkeys are fast, said Jack. Of course, jaguars are fast too, Jack thought. But he didn't want to tell Annie that. I hope he's okay, said Annie. Squeak! Peanut peeked out of Annie's pocket. Peanut, I almost forgot you, said Annie. Are you okay? The mouse just stared at Annie with her big eyes. Just, she looked scared, said Jack. Poor Peanut. Poor monkey, said Annie. She looked around the forest. We'd better check the book, said Jack. He pulled out the book. He turned the pages searching for help. He stopped at a picture of a very scary creature. Oh man, what's this, said Jack. He read the writing below the picture. It said, Vampire Bats in the Amazon Rainforest. 
At night, they quietly bite the victims and suck their blood. Vampire bats said Jack. He felt faint. Vampire bats said Danny. Jack nodded. After dark, Jack and Danny looked around. The rainforest seemed to be getting darker. Yikes, said Danny. She looked at Jack. Maybe we should go home. Jack nodded. For once, he agreed with Danny. But what about our mission, said Danny? What about Morgan? We'll come back, said Jack. We'll have to be prepared. So we'll come back tomorrow? And he asked. Right. Now, which way is the treehouse, said Jack. This way, said Danny, pointing. That way, said Jack, pointing in the opposite direction. They looked at each other. They're lost. They were lost. Squeak, don't worry, Peanut. And he started to pat the mouse's head again. But then she stopped. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Jack, I think Peanut wants to help us, said Danny. How? The way she helped in, this, in the time of the ninjas. And he placed the mouse on the leafy floor. Take us to the treehouse, Peanut. The mouse took off. Where'd she go? Said Danny. I don't see her. There, said Jack. He pointed to the leaves rustling on the ground. A streak of light passed over them. Leaves. Yes, there, said Danny. Jack and Danny followed the moving leaves. The streak of light appeared and disappeared. Suddenly, Jack stopped. The floor's floor was still. There was no sign of Peanut. Where'd she go? Asked Jack. He kept staring at the ground. Jack, Jack glanced around. Danny was standing on the other side of a nearby tree. She was pointing up. Jack looked up. The tree house. Oh, phew, Jack said softly. She saved us again, said Danny. She's running up the ladder all by herself. Look, Annie pointed at the rope ladder. Peanut was climbing up one of the ropes. Let's go, said Jack. Annie started up the ladder. Then Jack followed. They followed Peanut all the way up to the canopy of the rainforest chapter nine the thing jack and Annie climbed into the tree as peanut was sitting on a stack of books and he patted the little mouse's head thanks she said softly i have to write some notes about the rainforest said jack he you pull you find the pennsylvania book and he began searching for the pennsylvania book the book that always took them home jack put out his notebook he had not written he don't not taken lots of notes but all he's written so far was the amazon rainforest is it's not here sandy what jack looked up he glanced around the treehouse and he was right the pennsylvania book was nowhere in sight was it here before we left said jack i don't remember sandy oh man said jack now we can't get back to frog creek that means we'll be here when the vampire bats come out sandy Something came flying through the treehouse window. Ah! said Jack and Annie. They hid their heads. Thud! Something hit the floor. A red fruit. Jack looked up. The monkey was sitting on the windowsill. His head was cocked to one side. He seemed to be grinning at them. You're safe, said Annie. Thanks for saving us, said Jack. The monkey just grinned. I have one question, said Annie. She pointed at the fruit. Why do you keep throwing those at us? The monkey grabbed another fruit. No, don't throw it, said Jack. He ducked. But the monkey didn't throw the fruit. He held it out to Annie. He moved his lips as if trying to say something. Annie stared into the monkey's eyes. He moved his lips again. Wow, Annie said softly. I understand now. Understand what, said Jack. Annie took the fruit from the monkey. This is it, she said. The thing we need. What thing, said Jack. One of the special things we're supposed to find for Morgan, she said, to free her from her spell. Are you sure, said Jack? Before Annie could answer, Jack saw the Pennsylvania book. Look, our book, he said, pointing. We found the thing and now we can see our books, said Annie. That's the way the magic works, remember? Jack nodded. Now we remember. The ninja master ha said they hadn't be able to find the Pennsylvania book until they had found what they came for. The monkey screeched with laughter. Jack and Annie laughed, looked at him. He was clapping his hands together. Annie laughed with him. How do you know to give this to us, she said. Who told you? The monkey just waved at Jack and Annie. Then he turned and swung away off through the trees. Wait, Jack looked out the window. Too late, the monkey was gone. He had vanished below the treetops. Goodbye, called Annie. 
A happy screech came from below, the mysterious world below. Jack sighed. He picked up the his notebook again. He looked at his writing. The Amazon rainforests, he had to write something before they left. He had quickly added, amazing. Jack put away his notebook, and he picked up the Pennsylvania book. Now it's really time to go leave, she said. And he turned to the picture of the Far Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, she said. The wind started to blow. The trees, the leaves began to tremble. The trees began to spin, spin faster and faster than everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 10. Halfway there, Squeak Jack opened his eyes. Peanut was on the trio's windowsill. We're home, Sandy. Jack breathed a sigh of relief. Annie held up the fruit up to the afternoon light. What exactly is this, she asked. Maybe it's in the book, Jack answered. He pulled out the reinforced book. He flipped through the pages. He came to a picture of the red fruit. Here it is, he said. He read out loud. The mango has a sweet taste like that of a peach. Mango? Mmm, Miss Danny. She brought the fruit to her lips. Hey, said Jack, grabbing the mango from her. We have to put it with the moonstone. Jack placed the mango on the curved... Um, into the floor. Next to the clear moonstone. Moonstone mango, whispered Danny. It sounds like a spell. We're halfway there, said Jack. Two more things to go. Then we can free Morgan from her spell. And he called as if Morgan were nearby. How do you know she can hear you, said Jack. I just feel it, said Annie. Oh, brother, said Jack. We need m- more proof than that. Squeak ate Peanut was looking at Jack and Annie. We have to leave you now, said Jack to the mouse. Squeak, can't we take her with us, said Annie. No, said Jack. Mom won't let us keep a mouse in the house. She doesn't like rice. Mice, remember? How could anyone not like a mouse, said Annie. Jack smiled. How could anyone not like a spider, she said. That's different. Annie patted Peanut's head. Bye, she said. Wait. For us here, we'll be back tomorrow. Jack patted the mouse too. Bye, Peanut. Thanks for your help, he said. Squeak. Jack put the rainforest book on top of the book about ninjas. Then he pulled on his backpack, and he and Annie left the treehouse. They climbed down the rope ladder. They stepped onto the ground. They started walking through the Frog Creek woods. Leafy shadows danced in the light. A bird called out. These woods are very different from the rainforest, Jack thought. There are no jaguars or army ants here, he said. No little monkeys. You know, the monkey was never being mean, Sandy. He was just trying to give us the mango. I know, actually nothing was being mean, said Jack. The army ants were just marching. That's what army ants do. The piranhas were just being piranhas, Sandy. The snake was just being a snake, said Jack. The crocodile was just being a crocodile, said Annie. The jaguar was just taking care of her baby, said Jack. Annie shr- shuddered. I still don't love bugs, she said. You don't have to love them, said Jack. Just leave them alone and they won't bother you. In fact, the, the truth that's the truth about the whole rainforest, Jack thought. Everyone should just leave it alone. Who cares if bugs don't have main names, they, he said softly. They knew who they are. Jack and Annie stepped out of the Frog Creek Woods. They started walking up their street. In the light, with the golden light, Race you, said Annie. They took off running. They ran across the yard. They raced up their steps. Safe, they shouted, tagging the front door together. Now, I'll tell you one bonus. Growing up in the rainforest. Rainforest children learn a lot growing up in the rainforest. Here are some of their lessons. One, what to eat. Some rainforest kids and some rainforest plants and animals are poisonous. Rainforest children learn what to eat and what's dangerous. Two, how to hunt and cook. Girls learned to find good plants to eat and how to cook them. Boys learned to hunt animals with spears, bows and arrows and nets. Three, how to have fun. Most rainforest people tell stories together at the end of the day. They sometimes dance and sing. Rainforest children learn and dance in songs and story times from their parents and other relatives. So, bye. Hope to see you next time. I'll read another book soon if I find one at the library. Oh, you know this whole time where I've got all my books? Only one of them I didn't get from the library. All the others I had to get from the library because 
they have a lot of popular series. So, bye. Hope you like this book.